All right, welcome back to the Pit Stop Ranch. We are finally getting back to our 59A flathead. Um, it, uh, if you recall, last uh, video we did on this, we had one cylinder that was spurting fluid. Well, I think that trying to figure out what's going on uh, this video. Oh, and this came right off. Mm -hmm. But, all right, so I think this is our culprit right here. Yeah, it could be. It looks a little lifted up right there. There doesn't appear to be any RTV because some schmutz down every single one. Um, except for this one here. So this, this well, one's so This one looks pretty clean too. And that one looks pretty clean too. So we'll go ahead and pull all the studs, put a new head gasket on, reseal all the threads, put it back together and try again. Uh, while we got it apart, we're going to go ahead and look really close um, on the deck and in the cylinder for any moisture. But it's important, we, one of the things we wanted to do when pulling this apart was to make sure no water is in any of the cylinders before we uh, call this a day. This one here you can see is clean, just like the valves and the top of the piston. What happens is water gets in there, it steam cleans. Not, not Assuming not so much gets in there that it hydro locks right away, but enough is getting in there that it's um, flashing to steam as the combustion occurs and it's steam cleaning it every single time. Okay, using plastic tip on my gasket scraper, got that down and good. Now, with these aluminum heads, it is generally considered good practice to have them decked uh, right out of the box. Don't even worry about just deck them before you put them on. Now we, that seems kind of, I don't know, seems kind of funky to us. So we went on and tossed these on. So one of the ideas or one of the fears is that not only does do we need the thread sealer on the, the studs redone, but this is not, this is not as flat as it could be. We want to take five or ten thousandths off of both. So we'll go ahead and just take the other one off as well. And um, we'll take it to the head shop, get them shaved ten thousandths. And along with new thread sealer everywhere and uh, go from there. We went ahead and got them resurfaced. Uh, one head has been, um, has had 3,000s taken off of it, the other had 5,000s taken off of it. The instructions at the, at the shop was just take enough off that we get sealing. That's good and flat. So, Five thousandths across it isn't much, but it might have been enough that with these particular head gaskets, it wasn't going to work. Now, something on this head gasket overall noticed is some of these holes are small relative to the water passage holes, and some of them don't even line up all the way. Um, and that makes me believe that maybe, maybe this gasket actually doesn't truly fit this one, this engine. So um, that, by having these these ports restricted, um, it limits the flow through certain parts of the engine. Now some of the ports are nice and big and allow plenty of flow. So it might be a engineering decision to do that in order to have the flow where you need flow and slow it down where you need the water to linger in order to get more heat out. So, um, don't know about that. And because of that, it would create, build up pressure inside the block from these brand new water pumps 
build pressure up inside the block, causing it to spurt out whatever, wherever is the weakest. One of the design features of the, um, the 59A was they wanted to make sure, they wanted it to be uh, symmetrical, the two heads, the everything. That's the reason why they designed the way they are. So, anyways, if you know, most of these water ports are, are much bigger than the ones in the copperhead gasket. So we think this will definitely not have quite as much pressure inside. So we're going to go ahead and run these head gaskets here. We're going to go ahead and do a deep inspection on the cylinder. That's the problem. And see if we can find any cracks. If we can't find any cracks, then we're going to go ahead and reapply sealant to at least one of the studs, if not all the studs. And then we're going to go ahead and, go ahead and, and, and bolt all of this back together and try and run it again and see if we have the same result. So, <clears throat> this is what came out of the crankcase just now as well. Oil-like substance. And now we just dumped some used oil down in order to help kind of try and flush some more of this stuff out. Also shot a little bit of brake clean up in there to help flush some more of it out. Um, when I cracked the drain plug, and initially there was a flow of water, decent flow of water. So uh, we definitely got plenty of water down the bore into the crankcase. So there on. Mission on. Power on. Missing anything? Not that I can see. Just a couple of screws. But those go in the put ears. I was gonna say th those aren't missing. They're just really, really loose. They're about to be missing. All right, here we go. Hydro locks. Mm. Well, it almost feels like it's it's like valve isn't closing or, or not closing, but like, like hitting on something. But I don't think that's what it is. I don't think because there was plenty of room in these heads for valves. Yes. There you go. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna turn it over, put the starter back in, put the turn it over. We've drained all the water out of it. So um, now some more water has probably leaked into the cylinder, but it shouldn't be too bad. We're trying to test to see if it's a um, hydro lock problem or not. I think maybe we should take this spark plug out. Well, and there you go, on that disappointing note. It was none of the stuff we thought it was. Um, head gas, undoubtedly, I'm sure if we pulled the head gas, it's fine. Um, the head is good and flat. Um, so, the only thing that's left was there was a little suspicious spot. Um, inside the uh, exhaust pocket 
and quite honestly it could easily just be a crack in the cylinder that we're not picking up with our eyeballs with our peepers so um, could be a matter of sleeving it, it could be a matter of any number of other things if it's actually in the exhaust passage which for it to go backwards into the cylinder would be a little difficult so I'm pretty sure it's, it, we definitely got a damaged block. It's leaking water and leaking water quickly into the cylinder because um, it just come puking out. It was, it was like half the cylinder was full clearly. So, and as you saw, we turned it and went meh, and then the starter kicked out and stopped meh, which was it, which was the engine hydro locking. So fortunately, it didn't kick off. Because if it kicked off, um, it would have just exploded the, the, the piston and, and everything. It would have just... It runs good on water. Okay, we're going to do it one more time just because we want to hear it. Because it's going to be a year before we get to hear it again. We just had to run it to uh, prove that it runs just because it feels good. And it helps dry out the number eight cylinder so that, um, you know, we don't feel we have to pull the heads off right away and um, swab it out. And it's just fun to listen to these things run, even for a short burst while they uh, heat up without water. So. Off to H&H &H this block's going. Now, a lot of uh, uh, folks out there, um, Iron Trap Garage included, who don't mess around with that. They just go ahead, if it's got a problem, they set the block aside, pull the good parts off, and uh, scrap the rest, because there's enough fixable blocks out there. Um, fortunately, H&H &H is pretty reasonable when it comes to fixing blocks. Um, costs about the same to pay them to fix a block as it does to go find a block that's good that you find out isn't because remember this was a very good block all it takes is money guys all it takes is money if you enjoyed this episode please hit the like button if you haven't done so already please subscribe until next episode um, have a cracktastic day Oh, oh, oh.